Au nom de l'Assemblée générale, j'ai l'honneur de souhaiter. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to. I have the honor to welcome His Excellency Petro Pavel, President of the Czech Republic, and I invite him to address the Assembly. Monsieur le Président, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure and a humbling experience uh, to address uh, this distinguished audience uh, for the first time. This forum carries a great responsibility for the shape of uh, humanity's future. First and foremost, I see uh, my address as an opportunity uh, to present a view of how we can coexist uh, and cooperate uh, as nations and global citizens. Czechia aims to play a proactive role and responsible role uh, within uh, the global community. No one can cope uh, with the current global challenges alone. That is why we strongly support the reform uh, proposed by the UN Secretary General in our common agenda. We want uh, to work together on a more effective and inclusive uh, multilateral system that is able to address the needs that we face. This is why Czechia announced uh, its candidacy for non-permanent membership of the Security Council for the term 2032-33. Last year, a permanent uh, member of the UN Security Council, one of the founding nations uh, of this organization, blatantly violated uh, the fundamental principles the UN stands upon. The Russian full-scale invasion of Ukraine continues to constitute a manifest violation of the UN Charter and international law we all subscribe to. My country has its own experience uh, with wars and interventions, including decades-long military occupation imposed by Moscow. It taught us what it means when might makes right. Russia's aggression against Ukraine has come at an even higher cost. I personally visited Ukraine in April this year. My wife had uh, this opportunity to visit the war-torn country only two weeks ago. I saw the infamous uh, crime scenes of Bucha and Borodyanka. I found myself uh, in Dnipro region, only a few miles away from the front line, in the area ravaged by war fighting. The account of Russia's atrocities, human rights violations, and ferocious attacks against the innocent civilian population is overwhelming. Children forcibly separated from their families, deported uh, for re-education in order to make them uh, uh, forget their culture and who they are. Entire towns and villages wiped out for no reason, mass graves and torture chambers in which people just disappear. Sadly, the evidence uh, tells the story better than any statement. The list of stories uh, full of horror is endless. Yet we cannot just uh, passively observe it. This must end. Russia must unconditionally withdraw all troops from the entire territory of Ukraine within the, its internationally recognized borders. Russia's leaders must be held accountable for the crime of aggression against its neighbor. This is why we have extended our support to the establishment of a special tribunal to prosecute the crime of aggression against Ukraine. It is our duty to ensure that those responsible for war crimes and crimes against humanity are held accountable. Apart from violence, injustice, and suffering of civilians, every war also brings destruction. Reconstruction of Ukraine may be the largest rebuilding effort in modern history. We support establishing the register of damage caused by Russian military and we call on all states to join these efforts. Czechia will support Ukraine uh, in its uh, defense as long as necessary. From day one, we have uh, stood by Ukraine's side and provided uh, the defenders with weapons and ammunition. 
With the outburst uh, of the Russian aggression against Ukraine, Czechia has also stepped up uh, its support for uh, Russian and Belarusian pro-democratic voices, and Prague has become an important hub for journalists and human rights defenders in need. For over 18 months, Czechia has been providing humanitarian assistance to the war-affected Ukrainian population. Per capita, my country has received more Ukrainian refugees than anybody else, mostly women and children. What Ukrainian people truly deserve is peace, not just any end of hostilities, but uh, just and durable peace. If it is to be sustainable, it cannot be based on an unjust compromise or conditions imposed by the conqueror. Neither shall it leave hopes for Russia to fulfill its imperial ambitions. It must be peace on terms of the defender and not the aggressor, as uh, early today stated uh, President of Ukraine Zelensky. Don't forget, the damaging impacts of Russia's aggression are, uh, are felt across the world. Russia's blockade of Ukrainian ports and destruction of infrastructure and grain continues to weaponize global food security in, in uh, the most reckless and cynical way. Let me be very clear. Ukraine's security is our own security. From Africa to Europe to Latin America to Asia. I call on leaders of the free world to keep the unity and support of Ukraine. Mr. President, the threats we face are global and interconnected. Because of Russia, and a handful of other countries, our world is more dangerous and rougher. Instead of cultivating cooperative security, we have to build up our militaries. Instead of boosting social cohesion programs and overcoming economic insecurity, we have to boost our defense budgets. Those who contest the international rules steer the wheel of global security backwards into confrontation and sooner or later at the expense of all of us. Russia's uh, reckless threats to use nuclear weapons, its policy of coercion and intimidation represent a threat to balance and integrity of the whole system of non-proliferation. The announced uh, stationing of nuclear weapons in Belarus uh, is a further irresponsible escalation Czechia condemns in the strongest terms. Unfortunately, Russia's fingerprints can be found in several other current crises. Mr. President, the security, humanitarian and political uh, crises unfolding in Sahel region are uh, more than worrisome. The international community must try to find a way to end the series of military coup and ensure a return to constitutional order. This is the only way countries can effectively protect themselves against terrorism. It is the only way the much-needed economic and social development called for by African people can take place. The region remains vulnerable to numerous political economic and climate risks. Its long-term stability, security and prosperity is crucial. We must offer genuine pragmatic partnerships. Some countries pretend to be willing to help. In reality, they create economic and political dependencies. These undermine the long-term stability and manipulate the free will of people by spreading lies and disinformation. In Asia and Pacific, Czechia is uh, an active and a reliable ally and partner. The word cooperation must remain key for our joint efforts in the region. We deplore China's military actions uh, which raise tensions uh, in the Taiwan Strait and 
its unfriendly actions against partners in the South China Sea. Any dispute or contagious issue must be solved peacefully. Any potential armed conflict in the region would have negative consequences for the whole world. In North Korea and Iran, reckless escalation of nuclear or intercontinental ballistic missile activities combined with lack of transparency threaten international and regional security. The same applies uh, to any material support to Russia's military aggression in Ukraine. It is clear that uh, such supplies only aggravate the suffering of the Ukrainian civilian population. The Middle East remains uh, the world's most volatile region, troubled by spread of conflicts, terrorism, and sectarian violence. Efforts to norm normalize relations between Israel and its Arab neighbors bring positive steps uh, towards stability and peace in the region. Mr. President, our efforts to uh, maintain peace and security are closely linked with our ability to promote human well-being and sustainable development of our societies. One may ask how a country of 10 plus million uh, people can contribute uh, to uh, global ambitions. Having our own national experience with oppression, fundamental rights and freedoms are deeply embedded in our value system and foreign policy. Czechia strives to pursue an active human rights and democracy policy. We are a staunch supporter of international human rights mechanisms. Currently, we are proud to serve as the presidency of the UN Human Rights Council. More than ever, we have to support media freedom to enable access to independent and factual information. Without it, disinformation and propaganda will prevail. Mr. President, the Sustainable Development Goals Summit yesterday uh, sent a strong message of urgency and determination. The 2030 Agenda is a promise uh, to current and future generations which we have to keep. There is an urgent need to highlight the link between peace, security, climate, environment, and development on one hand, and human rights, justice, and strong institutions on the other. In the latest uh, SDGs index, Czechia is ranked as the eighth most advanced country in the implementation of uh, the Agenda 2030 and its uh, SDGs. Yet we also face many challenges and we need to step up our efforts. Climate change remains the single most destructive threat to the current and future existence and well-being of all humankind. It threatens our lives, livelihoods, food security, prosperity and ultimately peace and security worldwide. Czechs devote a lot of attention to this issue. It is no coincidence that uh, it was under the Czech presidency of the Council of the European Union last year that uh, we finalized crucial legislation which uh, shows the path towards the uh, green transition of our industry. Thirty years after the end of the Cold War, we are witnessing efforts of authoritarian regimes to redefine core principles of multilateral order. Malign actors use cyberspace, disinformation, economic, political, and other tools to disrupt democratic processes, to undermine our institutions, and to weaken our security. The challenges we face today are significant, and it is apparent that only collective action can ensure a safe, and prosperous future for all. In this respect, Czechia recognizes its global responsibility and remains committed to ensuring that no one is left behind. 
I personally commit to work with the international community to fulfill uh, urgent work that must be done. All the best to you and thank you for your attention. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank the President of Czechia for the statement just delivered and I request protocol to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will now hear an address by His Excellency Saran 